Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about family karma and ancestral karmic debt. Family karma is the karma of your ancestral bloodline from your parents all the way down to you and then all the way down to your children. For example, say your father was the most spiritually developed within his family and he had five siblings. He would be the carrier of the energetic blockages in the karmic family line. Learn more about this after this. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Welcome to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria. So join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. Welcome back. Welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. Today, we're talking about family karma and ancestral karmic debt. Now, I'm going to repeat what I said at the beginning because it it helps to move forward with what else I'm going to tell you about. So family karma is the karma of your ancestral bloodline from your parents down to you. Again, for example, say your father was the most spiritually developed within his family and he had five siblings. He would be the carrier of the energetic blockages in the karmic family line. He is carrying this burden from when he was born and will continue to do so his whole life unless he releases it. It's a passing down of energy, either through physical and verbal means or completely energetic and subconscious. It can affect the way in which you interact with your family on a subconscious or an unconscious level. If you consider yourself sensitive, psychic, intuitive, or spiritually developed and are born out of two spiritually burdened parents, it can seem like you're carrying twice the load. And I know how this feels because I am the most spiritually developed in my family and I was born out of two spiritually burdened parents. Many of us don't naturally get along with our parents, and sometimes this has to do with energetic ties to past experiences. Everything is fundamentally energy. So our consciousness exists beyond physicality and our understanding of linear time. Okay, for example, there's different versions of us that are imprinted in our nervous system that live in different realms, and these imprints need to be healed and resolved. And when they're not resolved, they show up in different ways in our current reality, mostly hindering us in some way, shape, or form. These other realities carry the imprints of our ancestors from generations before us, if not resolved from our own parents first. All the unresolved trauma, whether it's war, holocaust, abuse, rape, molestation, drugs, addiction, poverty, illness, abandonment, betrayal, violence, whatever it may be, all of these things have happened in our lineages that were never really resolved and then we came in to this life with it. These imprints were already there in the body, in the DNA, where our soul came in. And when they're not resolved, they affect us in this life physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And when these imprints become unraveled and removed, you return to the natural state in which you were born, which is a clean slate. Once this happens, we're able to reconnect with the source and listen to our heart. 
And in return, many times, once these imprints are resolved, it can also change the people that surround you. The actors in our story begin to change once our stuff is resolved. And if there's any unhealthy relationships in our lives, they will no longer vibrate at the same level as we do now. So they will also fall away from our lives. Now, I want to explain a little bit about people that play roles like characters in our life. When we begin to create change in our life, people will come in and out of our lives. Some will stay and some will go. But know that every person that comes in is a lesson, whether it's for us or for the person that comes into our lives. There is always a lesson and a purpose. Just like a movie, people come into our lives as actors and play roles. And these roles are to allow us to heal from past traumas that we have experienced in life. It could be this life or previous life, but they all come in to help us heal. When we finally learn the lessons and pull the weeds of our past out by the root for good, we can move on to the next lesson or release the next traumatic experience that no longer serves our highest good. And when we become aware of these weeds, so to speak, then we can start to see what roles these people are playing in our lives. Maybe it's time to stop allowing others to take advantage of you. Maybe it's time for you to say no and not feel guilty about it. Or allow others to make you feel guilty about it. Maybe it's time to stop putting yourself last. And it's time to take time for you. Maybe it's time to start loving yourself and take back your self-worth. It could be anything from, like I said, addiction to abandonment to poverty to betrayal. But check this out. They all can be passed down through what science refers to as epigenomes. These are markers or attachments to our DNA that store adversity and limitations of all kinds. And they have even been proven to skip generations. What happens is they can be passed down to an organism of the organism's offspring. Which means, guess what? That it's in our DNA. And these imprints are stored in these epigenomes. So basically what this means about the epigenomes is that we receive them from our parents automatically when we're born. If they do not resolve it, if we become the most spiritually developed. Now, this can also go back to the dark night of the soul, which I have not talked about yet, but you can find on the internet all over the place. So if you're interested in the dark night of the soul, then Check that out a little bit. I will do a show on that soon, though, because it really goes well with the um, just karma in general. Now, I don't want this to scare you into stopping learning about your spirituality, because let me tell you something, regardless if you try to stop it or not, it's going to happen. Because if it's meant to be, it's meant to be, whether you like it or not. Which brings me to tell you a little bit about what I'm going through. Exactly what I've just been talking about is what I'm going through. I am learning that I had five other imprints, I guess they're called and and bear with me because I am just learning about this as well I had five other imprints that were affecting me really bad emotionally and physically in this life I have resolved 
three of them. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I still am working on two. I even know their names. I have dreamt about them. It's crazy stuff, people. It's crazy, crazy shit. Like, I'm, like, baffled by this epigenome stuff. Back to the science part of the epigenomes. They're markers or attachments that attach to our DNA, and they store adversity and limitations of all kinds. Sort of like cell memory. I don't know if anybody ever listened to Sylvia Brown, but she used to talk about cell memory. And I believe this is what she was talking about. This is scientifically proven stuff. Okay? Yes, it's crazy shit when you think about it. But if you really think about how your relationships are, and sometimes you just don't know why. I had a horrible relationship with my mother for years. But guess what? I had a imprint that I resolved and my relationship with my mother is has taken a a 360 degree turn. It's amazing. So basically what you want to do is you want to resolve all this past life karmic debt with your ancestors and family so you can start from a clean slate of possibilities in your life this could be stopping you from starting your own business and doing what you love is where I'm at actually I mean yes I started my own business but it's stopping me from advancing and then it's also affecting my sleep and my my schedule I want to be a clean slate. (laughs) I want all the things that I dream about to come to fruition. There are certain relationships that are strained in my family right now. I want them to go away. I want them to be resolved. And I truly believe that it has to do with family karma. Now, I have a little story I'm going to tell you. Not in too long. Y'all know that I'm a psychic medium. My father passed away in 2007. Well, not too long after he passed away, I had a dream of him sitting out in front of my house in the back of a pickup truck and all these unopened mailed letters were lining. I lived in a cul-de-sac. So all these letters were lined up all around the whole cul-de-sac. All the way from my house on one side to the other side of the street. Back to my house. And where he was sitting, he was bawling his eyes out. Crying like a baby, saying he was sorry over and over and over again. I'll never forget this dream. I I just feel like it was just, just yesterday and it was over 10 years ago. He was bawling his eyes out, crying, saying he's sorry. He's so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I kept asking him in my dream, what are you sorry about, Dad? Why are you sorry? And he just kept saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he was not allowed to tell me because then that would have interfered with human free will. Now I understand why he was saying he was sorry because He did not resolve the karmic debt, and I am the most spiritually developed in my family. It passed on from him to me. So, that's what he was sorry for. But, with that said, he is now guiding me from the other side as well. Just a little something to throw in here, that sometimes when people pass away, It's because whether he was alive or dead, I would have been stuck with this karma. Okay, this family karma. And if he was still alive, he was an addict. He was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And he would not have been able to help me if he was still alive with this karmic stuff. But now that he's crossed over, he can 
So sometimes I want you to keep in mind, and I'm not saying it makes somebody dying any easier because I miss him every single day, but sometimes people cross over to the other side because they can help us more from a spiritual or a spirit perspective than they could when they were here on earth. So keep that in mind if you have anyone that you've lost, a family member or somebody important to you. Sometimes it's easier for them to help us when they are in spirit form. So let's get back to where we were about epigenomes. We want to start from a clean slate of possibilities in our lives, which will give us the best shot at embracing physical and emotional well-being as well as our life purpose which is what I was just talking about earlier with myself and we want to have our life easy sweet and with way less stress our bodies want to heal and release stress and evolve physically emotionally spiritually and even financially Humanity is trying to find a way around what troubles us when the true way is going through it. We don't have to relive old hurts or trauma, but it does need to be resolved. And that's where this work comes in. The technique, it's not unlike a recipe, a formula that includes connecting to the higher power of our understanding forgiveness, humility, and gratitude. There's four ingredients, and if you don't believe in God or a higher power, you can still get help as no belief is necessary, even through source or the creator. There's a fine line between past life or ancestral and family karma. They are an interconnected matrix that requires deeper levels of research and the different ways that need to be disentangled, deleted, cleared, or resolved. There is many spiritual traditions that teach that the spirits of our ancestors being alive, well, and also having a major influence on the present. Eastern traditions term it as negative karma, and it is believed to be an accumulation of experiences occurring and accumulating through many lifetimes. Our ancestors are not necessarily more enlightened or evolved than they were when they lived on earth, but they're still capable of having a profound positive or negative impact on our lives. Their energy resides within all of us through our DNA and has the potential to influence us in our daily lives through their living consciousness. When our ancestors were alive, they had their own programming and patterns, beliefs, attitudes, and desires that were what created their own karmic imprinting. Even after their death, all of those energies were still present, but there was no longer a vehicle by which to express them. Since the soul was no longer in a physical human body on the physical plane, They're passed on through generations until they are finally cleared, forgiven, and let go of from a family member that inherited the karma. Now, with that said, if you don't resolve the family karma or this ancestral karmic debt, it will also be passed on to your children. We have experienced life before this incarnation. Many of the people in your family are consciousness you have known before this life and have chosen to come to earth together with soul contracts. Depending on the path of your past, you may have chosen to take on a more intense life to balance out your karma. We are source consciousness projecting itself onto the 3D to better understand itself. From this perspective, there is no good or bad. There just 
is many have chosen to experience a life as a killer and then be killed. This is done to gain more insight from both perspectives and better understand the nature of reality. You and your mother may have had karmic building experiences in the past, anything from hurting one another to refusing to learn a lesson. Everything needs to balance. So if you caused a lot of destruction in your past life, you may be at the other end of it during this life. And this is where different experiences happen to us. If we look at every single experience, whether you label it good, bad, or horrendous, and you look at it as a lesson, it makes it that much easier to deal with. Family patterns get passed on from all the way back, from ancestors to great-grandparents to grandparents to parents to you, and then on to your children, and on and on it goes. For example, your grandma's theme was being too mild. She always took care of other people and let herself be used by everyone. Grandpa's theme could be something like alcoholism and smoking. Your mother's theme then translates to a self-sacrificial energy. This could look like uh, unfocused attention or lack of love for oneself or for her children. These traditions get passed down in the exact same way oppression, false truth, and hierarchy do. It perpetuates the system and keeps the mass consciousness at a lower, dense level. You, as a child of your parents, have the DNA karma of what has been passed down onto you. It could be incredibly mild or extremely intense. It's very specific to each one of us. So what are some traits of being the carrier of family karma. One, you're the most spiritually developed person and the most conscious one amongst your parents and siblings. Two, you've always felt different from your family. You felt a grave distance to who they are and how they behave or their beliefs. Three, sometimes you fall ill and have the feeling you are carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. Four, you have been entangled in bizarre family matters more than once. Or five, you recognize family patterns in your parents and ancestors and you actually understand it enough to change it. So how do you cut these energetic cords to this ancestral karmic debt? People may not resonate with the part of you that's different, and especially with their outlook on life. Releasing the ties to the parental energy means first and foremost to release the energy from your own mind and emotions. It's about looking within and finding out to what extent you live by your parents' set of illusions by their do's and don'ts, which were based on fear and judgment. Once you are clear about this and you're able to let that go, you will be free to forgive them and really leave the parental house. It's only after you sever cords on the inner level and take responsibility for your own life that you can really let your parents be. You will have clearly said no to their fears and illusions. But at the same time, you will see that your parents are not identical with their fears and illusions. They also are cosmic travelers, simply trying to fulfill their soul mission. Once you feel this, you can feel their innocence and then true forgiveness can be made. You have to realize that They did their best with what they learned to love you 
in a way that they could, in a way that they knew how. If you can feel in your heart that they did their best with what they knew and what they learned from their parents, even when best seems the worst, they did what they knew how to do because they learned it from their parents. And their parents learned it from their parents. And their parents learned it from their parents. And on and on it goes way back to our ancestors. In a sense, you have been the victim of your parents. Your parents may have been a victim of their parents. They have represented ego-based consciousness in your childhood. You have temporarily and partly lived according to their illusions. In a way, you had no choice as their child. However, to transcend your sense of being the victim here is one of the most powerful breakthroughs you can ever have in your life. Every single family has its challenges, secrets, failings, and shadows. And if anyone ever claims that they don't, they're lying. So how can you transform family patterns? It takes deep self-introspection, consistent meditation daily to get to the core of any reoccurring problems in your life. They are the result of behavioral patterns that once fully understood, you can start to change. It takes time and it all starts with the choice that you want to be your own master, your own energy, your own soul, and your own karmic carrier. You are filled with power. One of the first steps is simply believing that you are. We all need to wake up enough to become a beacon of light that raises the vibrations on earth. And again, once we begin this, it's contagious. And we begin to help others around us without even trying. Without even knowing it, people start to change because you no longer react the same way you did to the situation beforehand. So are you ready to surrender and follow your bliss? How? Seeing past the illusion of the ego, thinking it has power. Look into the being that you are. Look into the being that you're one with. The frequency, the vibrational level or depth of energy and going into the empty space between here and the higher self. There's a couple ways that you can surrender and follow your bliss. There's one way that I have been using and that's using the Hawaiian Ho'oponopono prayer. It's a very simple way to... Uh, release things and not have to worry about knowing what, where, how, and why of the situation. And the prayer goes like this. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I love you. Thank you. And what you do is you continuously repeat that with humility and gratitude And the truest meaning of forgiveness, which means to let go or offer up or forego with humility. And what you're releasing is whatever led to this issue to begin with, as well as releasing the blocks, because we're asking with humility and non-attachment. I was watching Oprah's life class a few years ago. And that's when Ilana Von Zant was a guest on her show. Oprah asked her how she would define the meaning of forgiveness. And this really opened my eyes to what forgiveness truly was. It always says to forgive, forgive, forgive. But I didn't know what forgiveness actually meant or how I truly knew if I 
did forgive. So the quote goes like this, forgiveness is letting go of the hope that the past could be any different. That blew me away when she said that. And we truly know when we have forgiven a situation or person because there's no longer any emotion attached to it when we talk about it. And we can actually speak about it without having any ill feelings about it. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I know it was a really deep conversation. And if you're not familiar with karma or karmic debt, please read more about it. Because it's so important to raising the vibrations on earth and raising us from 3D to 4D. Again, thank you for being here with me. Don't forget to do your Ho'oponopono prayer. You can find that on YouTube all over the place. I would also love to invite you to subscribe to my podcast and to my YouTube channel. And you can go to my YouTube channel at www.counciloflight.co or subscribe to this podcast. I thank you so much for joining me again this week. I will talk to you in the next podcast. Namaste. Are you looking for guidance in your life? You're trying to figure out what your next step is. Book a psychic reading with psychic medium and spiritual teacher Lisa Maria, who offers personal readings along with discounted home parties and events. Readings are available online or in person. For more information, visit www.lisamaria.com. That's www.lisamaria.com. Or you can contact Lisa directly at readingrequest at lifeyou.me. That is readingrequest at l-i-f-e-y-o-u dot m-e. Start changing your life today.